Hi, my name is Stephen McGee and I'm the author of Toxic Electricity. And we're here today to talk about female hysteria. And this is something I've been working on for the last few weeks and uh, it's quite an interesting story when you start looking into it. But basically, in the mid-1800s, all the females started coming down with this strange, mysterious condition called hysteria. And it's called female hysteria simply because it was limited to the female population. The males didn't appear to suffer from it. So it was something that was very unique to what the ladies were doing during that time. And if we move on, there's actually a movie, a recent movie that's been made about hysteria. It's actually called Hysteria. It's a very funny movie. And actually, talks about what was going on at that time. So you want to get a good basis of what was going on with female hysteria. I would recommend that you watch this movie. So when you look into ladies' fashions during that time, you actually find that they were wearing these dresses. This is called a hoop dress. And it's made up of many circular steel hoops. And it forms this dome and then the dress goes over it and you cannot see the dome, but you end up with this very wide bell-shaped dress. And the interesting thing about that is that these came into fashion in the 1850s and they went out of fashion around the 1900s. So for about 50 years, the ladies were wearing these steel hoop dresses. Now, one of the things I obviously research is the electrical system. And something else that was going on around that time was the War of the Currents. And this was a time where the AC electrical system was in development and the DC electrical system had already been developed. So in the 1850s, when hysteria took off, they were using DC electricity. And DC electricity is actually quite toxic because it uses brush generators and it uses brush motors and all brush generators and brush motors give off radio waves. So there was a lot of radio waves around when the DC electrical system was in use and those radio waves travel down the DC cables to wherever they're being used. So wherever there was DC generators, DC motors and DC electrical cables, there would have been extensive radio frequencies. And Around that time, also, Nikola Tesla was developing the AC electrical system. Uh, one of the interesting things about Nikola Tesla is that he had found, during his development of the AC electrical system, that there was copious amounts of high-frequency electromagnetic radiation in the environment, and he actually painted a, a device to actually extract that high frequency electrical energy. And basically it was a free electrical energy generator. And uh, because of his research, we do actually know that there was a lot of electromagnetic radiation around at that time that essentially was wireless as he was trying to extract it from the environment and use it for free energy. So this is what hysteria looked like. And this is a little graph and it shows how it rose. So this starts in the 1870s. And the next bar is the 1880s. The next one is 1890s. The next one's 1900s. Next one's 1910s. And the next one is 1920s. And we can see that by the 1930s, it actually dropped down to almost nothing. But there was a very steep rise all the way through from the 1870s to the 1890s where hysteria was getting more and more common. And then that started to drop off in the 1900s and there's a very significant drop in the 1910s. And what actually happened around this period was that the DC electrical system died out and the AC electrical system replaced it, which is a much cleaner electrical system. So it does actually coincide with the War of the Currents. 
and Nikola Tesla ultimately won the War of the Currents and his electrical system got adopted. And it was prevalent from the 1920s onwards. So pretty much everybody had AC electricity from the end of the 1920s in the cities. And that matches hysteria dropping to almost nothing in the population. So there definitely seems to be a link into the switch from DC energy to AC energy that occurred in the same period. So what exactly is hysteria? Well, hysteria actually appears to be what we today know as radio wave sickness. And radio wave sickness, if you look at the symptoms of radio wave sickness, it almost exactly matches the symptoms of hysteria that were being reported in the 1800s. So it appears that we're actually going back into another period of hysteria. And basically the reason why that's happening is because of the prevalent adoption of wireless radiation systems. And these wireless radiation systems are extensively polluting the environment. And the other thing that's also going on, which I talk about now in toxic electricity, is the AC electrical system has changed. And what's caused that change in the AC electrical system is the widespread adoption of electronic products. And you put electronic products on an AC electrical system, well, they start injecting very high frequencies of electromagnetic radiation into the system. And that can actually turn the wiring of your home into a radio transmitter. Once the wiring of your home is performing as a radio transmitter, then you're gonna get radio wave sickness eventually. So uh, we're actually seeing a second rise of the hysteria phenomenon. And it is actually affecting ladies more than the men, believe it or not, because of these. Now this is a lady's underwire bra. And in these underwire bras, you actually find that there's a piece of metal in each cup and they're actually acting as radio receivers and you put one of these on your body then you're going to start coupling in to all the wireless radiation and the other thing that also does it is jewelry so if you wear extensive amounts of jewelry then you're also acting as a receiver for wireless radiation and metal implants also do it so you know you've got metal fillings and you've got bridges and you may have a metal hip implant, you may have a bit of metal because you broke a bone and they fused it together with a piece of metal, then you're going to be very at risk of getting radio wave sickness in today's society. So that appears to be what caused hysteria to occur in the late 1800s in the females. And it also appears to be the reason why we saw it die out was because the AC electrical system came along. And uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting period to research because there's so much data available on it. And uh, I do actually believe today that hysteria was actually called radio wave sickness, but clearly in the 1800s they couldn't call it radio wave sickness because Radio hadn't been developed. Radio was developed at the very end of the 1800s. So that's why it was never called radio wave sickness. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and I wish you the very best of health. Thank you.